Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Flagstaff Shamrock 21 SS Hybrid Travel Trailer. Picked a pretty cool unit here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's talk about arriving at the campsite. First thing I want you to take into consideration, I have you slide in at the moment. Once it's out, get a good eye for how much room you need for that slide to come in and out unhindered and then leave yourself a good walking path beside it. And I also want you to think about where your water and power connections are gonna be. Your power off campsite or your driver's side of your tow vehicle all the way at the rear. And then your water is actually over toward your campsite all the way on the back of the unit. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. After you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you can do is level your unit. Now I do recommend, if you slide in, get a measurement over there, find the center of your unit, put a little stick on level, have someone watch that while you lower or raise your unit. Now you do have a night docking light here to drive at night. If you lose power, under a rubber stopper here is a crank for this manual crank, so you can get that up and down if you don't have power. Once you got your unit level, next thing you can do is stabilize it. On all four quarters of the unit, you have these stabilizing jacks, three quarter inch hand crank, just crank them down. So remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You only wanna crank them down just until you receive some type of pressure on your hand crank here. You can run them down with a drill gun or an impact driver. Just slow down when you get to the bottom because you only wanna get these taut. I recommend jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris, hot blacktop uh, in the summertime, keep them from sinking into the ground. Better distribute the weight. Just use your 10% uh, off coupon, get a four pack of those, put them down, and run all four of your stabilizing jacks down. Again, just until they're taut. Once you got unit level and stable, next thing we're gonna do is hook up our power and water. Coming around to your campsite, off campsite, excuse me. You have a big, long, 30 amp cord. The way these new ones go on. Turn to the left, wiggle that out. So you get in there, wiggle it in, and then put on your black washer. Should you need to plug in at home, at the end of that 30 amp service, you can use your 30 to 110 adapter that comes in your convenience pack. Just you got your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. On the back of the unit, there's a little docking station. You have your city water connect, your tank flush, and your antifreeze inlet. Go to your city water connect. First thing, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You're always gonna to wanna to use this when putting uh, liquid into your unit here. Hook that up, hook your hose up, but don't turn on your hose yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Over here on your off campsite, around the corner by your power, is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is making sure we return our drain plug. You may have left it out the last time you were camping. Get that in there nice and snug, then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. After your hose has been on a little while, go inside, open up your hot water tap. It's not going to come out hot yet, but once water comes out of there, you know you've depressurized everything, you can shut that off. Then you can turn on your hot water heater indoors. There is an on-off element here, taped to off. Only turn this on 
when you're uh, hooked up to 110. Turn on it here as well as indoors. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come out here. These may be bubbled up. It's a reset button. Simply press it back in. Other instructions are here. That'll get you set up. Let's say you're gonna go camping and you're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water. Go dry docking. Excuse me, all the way over on the front of your off campsite. I thought it was over here. It is your potable water tank. Simply fill that with a hose. Water pressure regulator not needed. Two ways to tell when it's full. There's an overflow valve right here. Or on the inside where you check the levels of your tanks. Simply press your fresh water button and that'll tell you when that's full. Just remember, when using potable water, is when you're gonna wanna turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water, it's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp. I'm gonna walk you around the rest of the unit and then go inside and open your slide. Inside your storage here is a table, a griddle, and another table that hook up on the other side. I'll show you where all that hooks up at. Really nice setup that Flagstaff sends with your unit. Storage here, fresh water drain. If you are using that potable water, here's where you open up to drain that when you leave your campsite. More storage here. Back here's your gray and sewage holding tanks. We'll dump those when leaving the campsite. You have an outdoor shower. Again, your hot water heater. Power. Back of your unit, of course, you get your bed will bring down. You're prepped for a Furion backup camera up there. It's a unit you can purchase from our store that electronically communicates with this device, giving you a backup camera on your tow vehicle. More storage back here. Your docking station. City water connect, cable, black tank flush when we're leaving the campsite. And when you winterize it, oh, satellite here. And when you winterize it, we will uh, put our antifreeze in there. On your campsite, low point drain for leaving the campsite. Right up underneath here. Let's see where that's at. Oh, right up underneath. There's your quick connect. There's your red and blue uh, water drain. It's got it over here, but it's actually down right where your disconnect is. Speaking of LP, here's your lip for your tables and your griddle. Access panel to the back of your fridge. TV can hook on here. Here's a 110 and cable hookup for that. Your outdoor speakers, your awning and porch light. That's a vent for the back of your microwave. This is a flue for your furnace. If your furnace is run, running, steer so clear of that. It'll get rather warm. And there's a hand crank for manual override for your slide. Coming to this corner, you've got solar prep. You can plug in the solar panel right there and it'll trickle charge your batteries. There's the rest of your hitch work. Coming to the front of your unit, your propane is on a regulator. It's on the front of the unit here. Point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. There's a battery disconnect down here. That'll disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. Another docking light for at night. About covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. Got these nice step above steps, fold up into the door. Coming into your unit, the first thing I'd like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. To the left when you come in, here's your control panel. Here's where you turn on your interior lights, porch and awning lights. Starting at the top here, your brand new battery fresh water button, that's when you can hold that until when your potable water is full. Your black tank and your gray tanks, keep an eye on them, dump as needed. Here's where you turn on your water heater if you're hooked up to electricity. Here's where you turn it on if you're hooked up to gas. Here's your water pump if you're using potable water. Your audio extension. It's a little windy outside today. I'm not gonna run it all the way out, but I am gonna show you how to run it out here. 
So you want, you want to run that out, you'll see a flap fall down to 90 degrees, and then you'll see the bar. Actually, it wins that down for a second. Let me run that out. Yours runs out pretty quick. And that runs out, and your flap there falls down, and you can see your silver bar. That's as far as you want to run that out. So again, it's a little windy. Yours is a fast one. Let's get that back in there real quick. So here's your slide in and out. We'll run that back in when leaving. Again, all your lighting down here. You have your Wi-Fi Ranger here, and all the system... All the information you need for that, here's where you turn it on at. You can be at the back of a park and you turn on that Wi-Fi Ranger, it's as if you're right next to their Wi-Fi system. Self-explanatory microwave. Your stove does have a light and a fan. Your glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Turn this over to the left to light. Ignite from here. Gas is off when your gas is on, that'll light up for you. Same thing with the oven. Turn this to light and ignite it from here. No, no need for a pilot light anymore. You have one touch lighting here above your sinks. Your Dometic fridge, open up your freezer. Up here's your controls. Push that in. Right now you're on auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Or release this button, now you're strictly on gas. Shoot that off. Let's go back over before we go any further. And deploy our slide. Out up here. I want you to hear this. That grinding noise is actually not grinding. It's just how the slide keeps itself from coming in too far or out too far. So it's okay to hear that for a second or two. So I'll continue back over here. Going back below your fridge is your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Looks like you got mostly 15s in there and a couple 40s. I highly recommend grabbing a handful of those when you go camping. In your bathroom is where your, here's your lighting for in here. This is where your 110 with GFCI resets at. In your ceiling, you have a hand crank open, power fan, four different speeds for that. It's a really strong exhaust. When you're traveling, make sure your shower is closed and clamp close. Your bunk, I'll open that up in a minute. Back here is your thermostat. Let's start by turning on your air. So it kicks on quickly. Now I'm gonna turn on your heat. Turn that up. Furnace kicked on. You'll notice that it will take longer for your furnace fan to shut off. It takes a couple of minutes, it does on all units. Also back here is a 110 and USB ports for this bunk area. On the floor back here in your hallway is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention it's 12 volt is it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, nothing plugged in charging your battery, use that battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Our slide, I'll show you real quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed. Lighting up here, just press that in. Your table, you kick this to the side here and pull on your table and it'll fold down. When it does fold down, set it on these lips right here. Remove your back cushions, put it on top, and that'll turn into another bed. Individual lighting up here. 110 and USBs here. Last, we come over to your TV. 
Up top, your IRV technology sound system. See, the furnace just shut off, so it does take a couple minutes. Turn that on. Find a station. But you, but as a parent, that is worth a dollar a day. So, Invest two zones. Music your music Nothing indoors, like outdoors, outdoors just outdoors, most, or both. Because it's songs like this. Um, yeah, AM, all, FM. We all need that reminder, whether you're a teenager or CD, not. CD. That reminder. Mode, you can get your TV audio to run through your sound system. Front audio, HDMIs. Bluetooth compatible, presets, here's your scans, start and plays, uh, USB port, auxiliary import. Your television. I'll turn this on real quick. It does have a remote for the uh, IRV technology system as well. Right there. There's your TV working. What I do want to tell you about your TV it is back behind here. So this is on a swivel, grab it with both hands, pull it towards you, see how the swivel's here? Behind here, where your cable goes in, see a button? Make sure that green light is on before you scan your digital scan for digital channels, for local channels. It's a digital channel enhancer, it allows you to pick up more channels. Press that back against the travel. Here's your regular antenna. Lift it up and turn it to the right to take it up. Bring that down. And your, looking for a smoke alarm. AC with quick dump. Hand crank open fan here. That about covers everything in here. Before I bring in your slides, I'm going to go ahead and open up these beds. It's a little easier as a two person job, but I think I can pull it off with one. It's just a little windy today. Get a hold of this and bring it down. No need to pull on your canvas to lift anything up. Going inside here, I'm going to set this down. See if I can show you what I do here. What to do. Inside your mattress. Will be this long pole with a curved end and a round end. Set that to the side for a second. Lay my mattress down. Look to see if can get to this pole. Once you can lift that up and get it above your mattress here. What you can do is you can line the round end of that pole up with this piece right here. Oops. Easier than I'm making it look. Well, thank you, wind. And then up here. You're just going to pull that and attach it in there however tight you want it. Push your mattress back, fold it forward. Just that quick you've got your bed. Zippers come down for airflow. Close it up. Fold your mattress up. See this does Velcro down once you're down. Pull as far forward as you can. Release this from up here. Let that fall forward. Set your pole to the side. Tuck this up underneath your mattress. Nice. Set to set your pole back inside your mattress here. Stand it up. 
We'll go outside and close it up. Now this will be a little trickier because what you want to do is tuck in your canvas as you go in because of the wind. I'm not going to be able to do it one-handed. Give me just a moment here. So again, just make sure you've tucked in your canvas all the way. Push that up. Clamp that down. Lock these up. Go back up in the unit here. Close everything up. Make sure all your doors and drawers are closed on everything, especially these here. You don't want nothing to break because you're bringing your slide in. I like to shut off my interior lights. And I can walk around and I can see any lights that I may have left on. And I get the bathroom light. Slide in. You see the bottom will shift in. That's because all the mechanisms are on the bottom of the slide. See the importance of having that drawer closed right there. That can snap right off. Bathroom door. Utilize every inch. And we're closed up. Exit the unit. Make sure you exterior your doors all the way open before you lift these up. Otherwise, this will catch on it. See how easy these go up? They're actually on a hydraulic. Uh, your feet here are adjustable by cotter pins. Sits right up in there. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn your handle. Your door is ready for travel. First thing I like to say is unhook your cable and water. Because once your water is unhooked, if you're using potable water, you can drain there. Come, come to your hot water heater. Pull on this pressure release valve and leave that up. That's going to drain your hot water heater. Come around to this low point drain. Just go up underneath there and open up both of those. Hot water heater should be done draining by now. Go ahead and flip that back down, otherwise your door won't close. And then you can pull your bottom drain. Remember to close that back up. Bring up all your stabilizing jacks. Unhook your power. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. That's the dump station. You take 10 foot convenience pack sewage hose. Hook it up right here. You got a gray and a sewer. Gray and sewer. First one you can pull is your black tank. Now after that black tank sounds like it's no longer draining, you're gonna come around to the rear of your unit with the hose at the dump station and hook up to your tank flush. Make sure you leave your black handle open, hook up the hose and run that for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all the nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook your hose, come back over, close your black handle and pull your gray handle. Now your gray handle is gonna be cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. That's gonna clean your sewage hose out for you. You're gonna come to your bumper, squeeze that and conveniently store your sewage hose right inside there. Nice sanitary place for it. And head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. We hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.